got a geodesic dome to live in for mm -hmm. a while, and uh, I just am enamored by the by the mathematical part of it. And so I built that essentially as a self portrait. Let's go. It's time to get up. Come on, honey. Come on. Oh. Did you sleep good? Where's my good girl? Where's my good girl? You look tired. We go for a ride? We're leaving today. Well, good morning, Story Chasers. It is a beautiful, beautiful sunshiny day here in Florida and I'm leaving Panama City today to head out on another scenic route that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's going to take us about two to maybe three days to accomplish. It's going to take us through some really like beautiful foresty areas along the coast as well. We're actually going to go inland a little bit towards Tallahassee. So it's going to be an amazing adventure and I hope you come along with me for this journey today. We're doing the Big Bend Scenic Byway, not to be confused with Big Bend in Texas. This is just the name that they have for it, but it's coastal and forest trails on US 98, and it's about 220 miles. They say it takes about two to three days, but I'm gonna try to do it in two, I think. We start out at the city here towards East Point, head over to St. George Island, and do this kind of loop that goes up to Tallahassee and back around. We have to backtrack just a little bit and then we start heading kind of in that corner area of the panhandle which I'll show you here. So this is a broader overview of it. We're over here in Panama City right now and then here's the Big Bend Scenic Byway. And so it'll start slowly kind of curving down this way towards the Keys which is where we're headed. This town that we're coming into right now is called Mexico Beach and it was just decimated during the last hurricane. And they still haven't really recovered yet. So you can see all of the downed trees, lots of construction and cleanup. We are now in, I think it's called Apachicola. I'm probably mispronouncing it, but that's what we're going with, Apachicola. This is the starting point of our scenic byway for the big Ben Scenic Byway out of National Geographic book. Oh, I love these trees. Oh yeah, historic district. This is beautiful. All oh, that house is beautiful. I guess it's a business now. Continue on US 98 East for five miles. Hubby. Wow, this is a very long bridge that goes across the water. We're headed over to St. George Island. There's a sign actually back there that says watch for birds. Along this bridges. We made it over the bridge. That was kind of intense. The wind was uh, pretty strong. Huh. It's like a cute little town over here, St. George Island. Look at these cute little homes. See how like narrow they are, but they're really tall. I kind of like it. Cool little beach houses on stilts, some of them. Right by the water on St. George Island. It's just a small little sleepy community, but it's so cute and quaint. No, oh, I really like that house. I love the color too. Hey girl, she gets so excited. She gets a reverse sneezing thing when she gets so excited. They are. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. I found this beach access area, and this is a handicap mat so that they can get their scooters or wheelchairs 
out to the beach area. Kind of cool. I've never seen that before. Oh, oh, hold on. You got a sticker? Hold on. You got a sticker? Hi, yeah, big girl. I don't feel a sticker, Mama. There's no sticker. You okay? There's a sand spurs out here. And they get stuck in her little paws, poor girl. Ah, what a beautiful area. We've got the beach back here. And there's the lighthouse that we were just at. Cute little playground over there for kids. Back over the bridge we go to the mainland. On a lot of these scenic byways, you're gonna see signs like, oh look, it's a little gecko. Hold on a second. He's a little baby right there. <laughs> on a lot of these scenic byways, you're gonna see signs like this up here that tell you that you're on the right path to that scenic byway. So if you see these, a lot of times they have good markers that tell you to follow that path. So we are now on, what they're calling the Florida Scenic Byway, but this is also the Big Bend Scenic Byway, so there's various names for them depending on kind of where you're at. In fact, sometimes they actually have apps that you can use that will help you with your scenic byway, tell you all the different areas, the places to see along the way. It's really cool what they've done these days with smartphones and these apps so that you can really figure out these really cool places to go when you're on your scenic byway. Oh, this is really pretty through here. Now the waters have changed. You can see it's kind of this like muddy brown look. I'm not really sure why that is, but that's kind of how it is in the Gulf back near Mississippi and Alabama too. But that panhandle we were in in Florida, we got to see those blue green waters. It's such a beautiful day outside. This is gonna be exciting. I've never explored these areas. And it's a little bit different than what it was like in the panhandle. It's going to be a little bit more secluded, remote. Because I still don't know where I'm staying tonight. When I looked at the maps, there just wasn't a lot out there unless I wanted to pay for a campground. And you just never know if they're going to be full or available. So sometimes I just go in and I'll see if they have something available. I'll just, you know, go up to the facility and see if they have availability. Because sometimes they have cancellations too. So that's probably what we'll end up doing. We'll see. We'll find some stealth camping somewhere. I was just passing by over here in the city of Carabelle and saw this really cool memorial to all of those who served in our war. We have the different flags of each different division. We have the Marines here. We have the Navy. United States Coast Guard. We have the U.S. Army. And then we have, last, the U.S. Air Force. What a beautiful memorial. Thank you so much. And they all get to look out over the beautiful ocean waters. This memorial was actually dedicated by President Richard Nixon, November 5th, 1970. That was almost six months before I was born. Been a long time. <laughs> Over here off of the Big Bend Scenic Highway is this place called the Carabelle Bottle House where this gentleman built this incredible house out of all of these glass bottles. Dun dun dun! Closed for repairs. But we get a little view through the gate. We've got a lighthouse that he built out of the bottles here. It's super cool. And then this house over here. Oh, I wish we could go in. Well, at least that was on our route. We didn't go too far out of the way. It happens. Especially these days with COVID going on. There's just more and more things that are closed or 
you don't know sometimes until you get there, unfortunately. Mm, that's really unfortunate. I really wanted to see that too. One of the things that I really loved about this and that kind of drew me towards it is that the gentleman, Leon Wisner, who actually built this, he built it because he lived in a geodesic dome out in Tennessee and he kind of contributed this whole building and the lighthouse as part of his stages of life and how he's grown and developed as a human being and I just thought it was really interesting. He calls it his self-portrait so hopefully they'll be able to open soon. Maybe on the way back we can catch it but if you're ever in this area check online at carabelle.org and see if it's open. They started it in 2012 and they just plan to continue to keep building and renovating as time goes on and their life stages go on. We might be in luck. I was just sitting here trying to figure out my next route and one of the workers came over and said that the owner's over here and that he might actually really love for me to come in. So we'll see. Eek. Looks like someone has left some bottles for him by the gate, maybe to add to his collection when he's building. It's okay. How long has it taken you to do this? It took me a year to build this one. Oh wow. This is Leon everyone. He's the artist and builder of uh, this beautiful home and structure. Wow. Okay, so the these are shells. Yep. Yeah. Wow, this is amazing. Look at these bottles. Such beautiful architecture and color. Just the different details and the concrete. Got a big, like, huge mason jar, wine bottles, beer bottles, even a little window. So he has graciously allowed me to come in, but be very careful on the floor because the floor is actually, has all of these shells, I guess these are oyster shells, clam shells, and he's redoing it all, which is why it's closed. Come on, you gotta go. Hey there, mister. So these are uh, oyster shells, right? Yeah. So that makes the bottom of the floor. Yeah. And what does that actually do? It gives it a foundation, fills it in, and then the, the metal then just makes everything very solid. It's, okay. It came out of these panels. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when you pour concrete, you take a little, little forked thing and you pull the the metal back up into the concrete mm -hmm. and the oyster shells just accept all of it and become wow. a bed for it. I've just never heard of that. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, uh, you can use just about anything for a substrate. Oh, wow. Rock. Most people use rock. Okay. But hey, you know, we're in Well, you've got a lot of these around. Mm -hmm. Give people in Carabelle a little something yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. You did it all yourself. It's beautiful. The fortune when I was younger mm -hmm. to meet Buckminster Fuller and mm -hmm. to go to one of his town hall meetings up in Maine. And I just really, I've got another one over there. Yeah, I saw that. That's I so built cool. a geodesic dome to live in for mm -hmm. a while. And, uh, I just am enamored by the by the mathematical part of it, and so I built that essentially as a self-portrait. The center ball indicates where I was born and in Arkansas, and mm -hmm. was very small in the world. Slowly but surely, I moved out and became a little bit more intelligent, gained a little bit more experience, and then to the outside one, which is where I am right here. So it's. It's essentially a kind of a metaphorical self-portrait. Self-portrait. Is that not so cool? I'm so glad that I got to interview him a little bit and find out why he started all of this and 
just get that firsthand experience. What a gracious man for allowing us to come in. His poor back is hurting from all that concrete and building everything and he's under repairs and still let us in. Leon, thank you so, so much for allowing us to come in there and getting a little bit of a glimpse of your life and your story. Thank you. A beautiful drive through here on this little road right part of the scenic US byway. North US 98 East. Oh, I love these little scenic byways. It takes us a little bit longer sometimes, but that's okay. So much fun. So much beauty to see. So much meet cool people along the way. Oh, there's a big fire somewhere over there. I always wonder like how long have these bridges been here? Who built these first? I mean there's a ton of bridges out here because of so much water in Florida to connect all of the different land masses together provide shortcuts for people. I appreciate them very, very much. So much gratitude. Well, I thought about staying the night in this place called Sop Choppy, but it looks like we're going directly towards where that fire smoke is at. You can kind of see it in the air just above the trees. Welcome to Sop Choppy. Oh, it's pretty bad over here. These rusty old buildings. Grocery store. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I'd be surprised if that was a controlled burn. It's pretty, pretty big. Fire department. Wow, that is huge. I would not want to live here right now. I can almost see the glow. fire trucks just on the edge where there's like smoke. Oh jeez, I don't know actually. Yeah, there's like little areas over here where you can see they've lit it on fire. It's smoking. See right there? We're now in the Tallahassee area. I'm gonna stay here overnight. This is a pretty drive up to Cracker Barrel is off of I-10, but then you turn on the street here, which is actually really pretty. Got some beautiful trees with some Spanish moss. Well, we made it over here to Crackle Barrel in Tallahassee. It was a very long drive today. I think it was just because I had to get up so early this morning, and I haven't been sleeping well for some reason. I don't know why. Um, those bug bites have been affecting me and they're finally going away now after I started taking an oral Benadryl. It's really, really helped. I had to get over here to get on my student call with everyone. It's now the East Coast time zone that I'm in, so I got an extra hour, kind of, to uh, get ready for the call. So it started at 6 tonight. But uh, driving on the road and then getting here into Tallahassee, um, dealing with, you know, the smoke from that fire today, which wasn't horrible, horrible, but it was, you know, you could smell it inside the van a little bit. So by the time I got here, I was pretty tired, and so I hopped in bed and took a nap for like an hour, hour and a half, and it was nice to just do that before I had to get on the call. We are going to finish up the scenic drive tomorrow, and then start heading down towards Tampa for the meetup that I'm going to have down there for the YouTube subscribers. So I'm excited about that, and excited to meet everybody, and Gosh, we're gonna be in Key West in a week and a half. I cannot believe it. Actually less than that, a week and three days. It's gonna be so much fun. I cannot wait to get down there. I've never been. That was such an amazing story today with Leon and the glass house and I was really, really humbled that he shared his story with me and how he kind of got all of that started and in turn share that story with you guys. So I hope you guys got something from out of that as well. Story chasing is all about collecting stories and moments and living your life without regrets and living your life now. You don't have to wait. 
to live your life the way that you really, really want to live it. You can start planning. Maybe there's obstacles in your way right now that are keeping you from living your actual dreams and your goals that you want to do, but you can start planning for it. You can start creating small moments of happiness now by doing those actions and planning along the way and doing things that really feel good to you. Like if you really love hiking, go out and hike now. You don't have to wait till you hike, you know, around California or Florida or wherever that beautiful place is that you really want to go. Start going out there now and doing that. That's just a really small example, but that's just how simple it can be. A lot of times we think that we want that end goal to happen now and we're not going to be happy until we get that thing. But really what happens a lot of times is if you can start creating the happiness factor now, the end goal is more achievable because you're creating the happiness now rather than later. It's about the journey. It's not always about the destination. It's the journey, the story, the moment. All right, guys, I love you so much. Thank you so much for supporting my channel as always. And you guys have an amazing evening and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Good night.